Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is Bytes of Architecture. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about the basics of performance profiling. So in the previous video of Bits of Architecture, we talked about performance. Now, one of the things we care about as performance engineers and computer architects is how exactly is my application interacting with the underlying hardware? So we want to know, say, some stats about this interaction. And we also want to know, say, where is my program spending most of its time? So what lines of code are being executed the most and which ones are taking the longest. Now, the way that we typically do this is through performance profilers. And what we're going to be looking at today is how we can do exactly that uh, with this tool in Linux called Perf. So let's go ahead and get started and let's introduce our benchmark that we're going to be looking at today, which is just this dot product.cpp. And I've written this using Google Benchmark. So I'll have a, a link down to the repository for Google Benchmark down below. It's a very useful thing for writing micro benchmarks like this. So what we're going to be benchmarking today is just a simple dot product. And this is the entirety of our benchmark code, um, or rather our setup for our benchmark. So we just create this test function called test.product. Here I'm just setting the number of elements we want to have in our dot product. Um, filling these vectors with some random numbers based on, you know, in elements and this volatile float here. So this is just what um, dot product is going to be setting. Make sure it doesn't get optimized away. You could also use benchmark uh, colon colon do not optimize. And then down here, we just register a benchmark. So we say we want to run our test dot product benchmark in here. We're sweeping the values from um, eight to 10. So that's what we're setting up here for n. That's uh, what's populating this s dot range zero. So we're going to be running this on vectors of size 2 to the 8, 2 to the 9, and 2 to the 10, right? Because we're just doing this shift here. And then down here is basically our main function. Uh, so we call this benchmark main. Now at the very top here is the actual uh, function that we're going to be uh, profiling, or rather the thing that we're most interested in. And all we're, we're really doing here is passing our two vectors and then calling transform reduce, which is going to give us that dot product. And so we're accumulating into this. Um, initial value of zero. So here's where we're actually calling it. So this is our main benchmarking loop. So Google Benchmark will run this over and over and over again. So that's this while s dot keep running. It will go ahead and just keep calling this dot product function and setting this result. And it'll do it until it gets a stable measurement. Okay, so that's the basics of a benchmark we're going to be running. We're basically just calling this dot product function over and over and over again. So that's what we're interested in profiling. So we'll go ahead and quit out of here. And we'll compile our program. So we'll just do g plus uh, plus dot product. We'll do dash o2 optimization, and then we have to link against a couple things for Google Benchmark. So we have to link against lib benchmark and lib p thread, and we'll just call our output say uh, dot product. That'll be our executable. Okay, so we now have our executable. So we can go ahead and run this, and just to see what the Google Benchmark output looks like. So you can see it's running our three variants of our benchmark for the, those, those values that we swept from eight through 10. And then you can see our execution time, right? So 206 nanoseconds uh, for our dot product of vectors of size two to the eight, 434 for two to the nine and 891 for two to the 10. And you can actually see how many iterations that um, our benchmark actually ran, right? So this is how many times that it ran that dot product function, right? So that's how it got that stable measurement. Okay, so now we're interested in what's exactly going on under the hood. Say we want to get some stats about the execution of our benchmark. Well, the way that we can do that in perf is through perf stat, right? That's, that's one of the things we can do. So instead of just running my benchmark as normal, I can do perf stat uh, dash D, and I can run my program again. And then at the very end of execution, you can see I get a number of uh, performance counter stats. So some of the built-in hardware performance counters that exist uh, can be surfaced. So here we can see things like uh, how many cycles this program executed for and the frequency. So ran for you know, 13 billion cycles here. In that time, you know, we ran almost 21 billion instructions. And so we even get our IPC, right, our is 1.6. So remember, IPC is just the inverse of CPI. So it's one over the CPI. You can even see things like how many branches that we took. And for a branch predictor, how many of those branches were misses? And things like 
um, our decache loads, how many of those loads were misses, and things related to our last double cache. And there are tons of different performance counters that we can access, but just doing dash D once gives you uh, some of the high level important ones. Okay, so another thing we can do um, with perf is that we can use perf record and we can see you know the hot spots inside of our program. So let's go ahead and try that out. So we'll do perf record and we'll run our program again. So you get just about the same results. And then we'll do perf report. And this will take in all of that perf data and give us a bit of report. And it'll give us this you know, ranking of where we're spending the most time in our program. And you can see that most of our time is spent where we expect it. It's spent within our test, right? This test dot product. So 99.81% you know, of our time was spent inside of our test function. And then inside of this test, you can see that pretty much all of our time is spent in this very tight loop here, right? So we have, you know, a move followed by a multiply, followed by an add and another add, and then we have a compare and a jump. So th this should be fairly intuitive in terms of what part of our benchmark this is. This is that main loop where we're calling that dot product function, right? So specifically, this is doing our actual dot product, right? So we have say a load of our value, a multiply, an add, um, this is for a loop counter, right? So we're adding one here, this is hex one. So this is just incrementing our loop counter. Then we have our add that's part of our multiply and add of our dot product. And then we have a compare and jump here. So this is just another part of our loop. So we're seeing if we're at the end of our loop, right? Of that dot product. And we're either jumping back to move to the next multiply and add, or we continue out because we're done with our program. But you can see, we can see the actual lines of assembly that are taking the longest inside of our program. And as expected for a dot product benchmark, it's the dot product part. Okay, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. That's a basic introduction to uh, Perf and how it's used as a performance profiler. Perf is of course an incredibly complicated tool and there are so many different aspects that we can talk about. So this was just a basic introduction. I'll link uh, some more documentation about Perf down below. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.